Hello, friends. I'm going to share with you today a uh, sequence that I was inspired by Karin Guntner of Art of Motion, who works with Thomas Myers in the Anatomy Trains, as well as a teacher named Akosia Red Elk, uh, who teaches booty yoga. And then this is my kind of mashup of their sequences. Uh, it's a play on a more typical yoga pose, the triangle pose, um, but it's kind of like a dancing triangle because we're going to make it a bit more dynamic, um, moving within the posture. So I'm going to show you two different versions. We're going to start with a version using the, a chair for support, so any kind of standard um, sturdy chair you want to make sure it's not on wheels and it's uh something that is not, it's not on a slidey surface also um and yeah let's go from there so the first thing about triangle pose is getting our foot placement proper so if we're going to use the chair um, i'm going to start with my right foot forward and my left foot back and Try to see, look towards this, my front foot here. You see how my foot is actually next to the leg of the chair? It's not back behind the chair. It's a bit forward, right next to the chair. And then the back leg, my leg is medially rotated. So my toes are turned inwards to about a 45 degree angle with the heel back. And then I just kind of spread my toes out, let my feet lengthen and widen, get my Ribs balanced over my hips, tailbone dropping down, head balanced right between my shoulders. And then you can stretch your arms out to the sides and really send energy out through your fingertips. Now I'm squaring my chest towards the screen here and then rotating the right hip back, the, or the right hip forward, the left hip back. And I'm gonna shift my ribs side to side. So you should already feel a little stretch in the upper inner thigh on that front leg. That's that adductor magnus, big adductor muscles, maybe a little bit the medial hamstring as well. Try to really isolate the movement in the rib cage and your upper back. Lower body stays pretty steady. And then I'm gonna shift back to the left and then reach my arms in opposite directions. Now I want you to just linger here and feel that energy through your arms. And you should feel a little bit of stretch now in more of the front of the hip on that right side, the hip flexor. And then I'm gonna go up and over and plant my hand on the seat of the chair, kind of toward the back of the chair. Spin my thumb back behind. And you can just take a moment to look down and see your hand underneath you, see your foot. Notice if your toes are gripping. Look up, let them relax. Look up towards the top hand. Check in, do I feel my shoulder scrunching up by my ear or can I really widen across the back of my shoulders? And I'm gonna look straight ahead now and just check in with my pelvic placement. Can I keep the right hip forward, the left hip back? So I still feel that nice sense of spaciousness in the inner thigh of the right leg. Now let's take the left arm, that top arm, straight up and really reach your shoulders in opposite directions. So I'm not putting a lot of weight down into the right hand. I'm really stacking my shoulders and reaching in opposite directions. Now I'm gonna to start to shift my ribs again from here, down and up. And you might imagine there's a little string attached to the bottom rib through your rib cage to the top rib that goes up to the ceiling and you're kind of ruching the bottom side of the waist, drawing the bottom rib and hip together as the top side of the waist lifts up. And then let's pause with the ribs drawn together, the bottom ribs drawn together and just circle that top arm around. It goes back, down, up and around. And you can play with your gaze, you can check out the whole room, check in again, what's going on with my feet, and they really lengthen and widen. And then just reverse that. So we're gonna reach down through the left arm, lift up through the right arm, look up toward that hand. I can press the left hand into the back of my thigh here. Spin that thumb back behind you, feel the spiral go all the way through your arm into your shoulder. 
and then cartwheel your arms back up. And this time we're gonna spin the back heel up off the ground and square that left hip forward. Both hands are on the seat of the chair. Now, oftentimes we tend to hike one hip or the other. The right hip might be a little hiked if you're kind of stiff in your hips and your back. So let's tick tock our tailbone side to side, kind of waving at the wall behind me with my tailbone, letting my sit bones release away from each other a little bit. Notice if you're letting your rib cage sag down or your neck shorten. Can you keep the back of your neck long? You just look down, oh, what's my hands doing? And then let's keep that right sit bone reaching back and down toward the inner edge of the left heel. And then I feel a really generous stretch in my right hamstrings, more in the middle of the hamstrings now. So we just linger here for a few breaths. Check in. Did I start to collapse in the chest? Can I keep that buoyancy through the back bottom ribs? Keep wide across the collarbones. And then let's continue to revolve our triangle in the other direction. So I'm gonna move the left hand over to the right and rotate and look up toward the right hand. Keep spinning the right hip back, the left hip forward. Reach your fingertips, your arms in opposite directions. Feel that widening across the back of the shoulders. And again, you can kind of play with your gaze. Look in all different directions. Move your eyes inside your skull. And then let's make this more dynamic. So let's add a little arm circle to this, just like we did in the other direction. If this doesn't feel good, straight arm, you can also bend your elbow, put your fingertips on your shoulder. And then let's add, or let's do the legs first. So just put your hand on your hip and we're just gonna bend the front knee and then straighten it as much as you can. So I'm bending, letting my knee come right over my ankle. Maybe it reaches right through the center of the toes or a little past the toes. But if it's going way beyond the toes, you need to put your foot a little bit more forward. And now let's put the two together. So we're gonna sweep the arm into a big circle Arm comes down as the knee bends, and then it goes up and back as your leg straightens. One or two more. And then just rotate back to center. Let's put the right hand on the top of the chair, the kind of back of this chair, the left hand on the seat. And then I'm gonna either just walk my foot, left foot forward, or I can shift my weight into the right foot and lift that left leg straight up, push down through the fingertips of the left hand. I'm so see how I'm kind of making a little pyramid out of that hand. Square your hips toward the floor like headlights pointing straight down. Maybe keep a softness in the right knee so you're not locking into the joints and really feel that the leg, the left leg is staying parallel. My knee is pointing straight down. And then just put that foot down. Walk around a little bit and take a moment just to notice how one side of your body might feel different than the other after all of that gliding of the tissues over each other. Shake it out a little bit and let's do all that on the other side. So setting up, you get a little different view here. The feet. My toes point straight to the top of my mat on the left foot. The right leg medially rotated, toes turned in at a 45. Both heels are down. I stretch my arms in opposition and then shift my ribs side to side. Kind of like an old timey typewriter carriage, lateral shift. And then let's shift back to the right and go up and over, plant that left hand. Stay here a moment, spin that thumb back behind you. Let's spin the left hip forward, the right hip back. We find that nice sense of stretch in the inner thigh, the inner hamstrings on the left leg. Oh, I can feel my toes wanting to grip, so I'm just gonna wiggle my feet a little bit to let that go. And then circle that arm up back down and around. 
still breathing here. I realize I didn't say anything about breathing, but let's just breathe nice, full, deep breaths. Watch out for locking your elbow out. Keep a little softness there. And then keep your arm reaching straight up and just sink the ribs down and up. So that little oblique lateral shift. Again, you might imagine that string through the center of your rib cage, connecting the bottom rib to the top ribs, up to the ceiling. And then reverse it. So right fingertips reaching back, palm to the back of the thigh. Left arm, spin that thumb back behind you. And then we cartwheel our arms, and this time put both hands on the chair and spin the back heel up off the ground. Adjust your feet if you need to. And now let's swing our tailbone side to side, do a little tick tock. So I'm shortening the left side of my waist and then lengthening it. Sometimes we get kind of stuck in a hip hike. We have those patterns in our body. So we want to give a little balance to the waistline. And now lengthen that side. Think of the left sit bone reaching toward the inner edge of the right heel. Think of equal space on both sides of your waist between the rib and hip. Think of your belly drawing back toward your spine. Oh, and I can feel my neck shortening a little bit. So I'm gonna think of lengthening the crown of my head, sort of the, the back of the top of my skull away from my tailbone. Oh, and just breathe into any sticky spots you find. And then shift that right hand over to the left, revolving triangle around. Look up toward that left hand. Keep spinning now the right hip forward, the left hip back, that left sit bone toward the inner edge of the right heel. And then let's do that arm circle from here. So kind of yawning the chest open. You can also look in different directions, actually see the room, the space around you, and then maybe just look straight ahead. And then let's put that hand on our hip and just bend the left knee, straighten it. Now, if you're a little bit tight, you might just straighten to here, or you might lengthen the knee all the way out. Watch out for locking into the bones of the elbow on the right side. And when you're ready, let's add the arm circle. And you just let your breath flow. It doesn't have to be on every move because we're, we're moving at kind of a moderate pace here. Let the breath be slow and smooth. One more. And then I take both hands to the chair. Let's put the left hand on the back of the chair and then either just kind of step the back foot forward to come up to standing or bend that left knee and shift your weight into the left foot. Fly that right leg up behind you. And I'm using my fingertips on the seat of the chair, kind of doming of the right hand, pressing down with the left hand, drawing my belly in and up, widening across my back, little bend in the left knee, spin that right upper inner thigh up to the ceiling and knee and the toes straight down. And then just put that foot down, walk around again. Now, if that already felt challenging enough, then stick with that version, maybe even do that version over again. Otherwise, let's do the version without the chair now. So let's start with the right toes up to the top of the mat. I'm gonna get my feet in frame, immediately rotate the back leg, Shift it side to side. I'm gonna go maybe a little bit quicker with this version. Let's see, I'm checking in. Do I feel that the right hip is forward, the left hip is back, that little inner thigh stretch? And then I shift back, oh, arms reach in opposite direction. Find that diagonal kind of lengthening and then go up and over. And now my right hand, the palm is forward. I'm just reaching inside that leg, maybe all the way down to the ankle. And then I spiral, right ribs forward, left ribs back, right hip forward, left hip back. Look up, look down, 
anywhere in between and then start to pulse the rib cage up and down. And I'm really trying to find that change in length on the bottom side of the waist. It shortens and then it lengthens. And then we keep it long and scoop the right arm up and over. Look up toward that hand, thumb back. And then cartwheel this time. We're gonna spin the back heel. And it's more of a pyramid pose. So here, you can let your head nod forward. Shake out your head and neck a little bit. Imagine you could touch your nose to your knee and maybe do that tick-tock here of the tailbone. And then keep the right sit bone reaching toward the inner edge of the left heel. Breathe into any sticky spots. Maybe fold a little deeper. Maybe soften both knees. If you're super bendy, you might actually want to bend your knees so you're not overdoing it in the tendons and ligaments. And then let's rotate. So I'm going to move my left hand closer to the inside of the right foot and revolving around. Wowee, that's a big stretch. And then from here, I can circle that top arm. And then maybe I bend the front knee, plant that hand, and add the lunge, add that bending of the front knee. So I feel a nice sense of length in the front of the left hip as I sink down, the back of the left, right leg as I come up. And then I just square it forward. Let's do fingertips, palms up, and then shift the weight into the front foot, standing splits. Fold into it and then put that foot down. Roll yourself up to standing. All right, let's try that on the other side. So have a little reset moment. Left toes toward the top of the mat. Back leg medially rotated. Left hip forward, right hip back. And then shift your ribs side to side. And then I shift back to the right, come up and over, palm forward, reach that arm toward your ear at first, and then reach it straight up to the ceiling. And again, I can play with my gaze a little bit, find their balance, and then little pulse of the rib cage. Ipsilateral obliques on the left side, lengthening and strengthening the side body, and a little bit the spiral line of connective tissue here too. And then reach down, scoop it up and back, reverse it. And then cartwheel it, square it forward, let the back heel come up, fold forward, just shake out your head and neck, tick tock your tailbone side to side. And then find that sweet spot where you feel the right hip is squared forward, the left sit bone reaching back behind you. Breathe into it. And then move the right hand in, maybe plant that hand if you can. Rotate all the way around. Left ribs back, right ribs forward. And then circle that top arm. A few more, and then we can add in a bend of the front knee. And you might have to adjust your hand and foot placement when you add in the lunge so that your knee isn't going too far over your toes. It's okay to let it translate forward a bit, but not so much that I have any discomfort in my knee. And then square it forward back to that pyramid shape. Shift your hands a little bit forward, shift your weight into the front foot, and then standing splits, fold, and then place that foot down. Ground evenly through both feet, roll back up. Yeah. All right, my friends, let me know how it goes. <laughs>